my name is Henry Smith, I'm chairman of SARDA. SARDA started in 1987, to the best of my recollection. I was one of the founder members with um, Mick McCarthy, Neil Powell, Brendan Maher, and it was myself. So we were the founder members. That then progressed on to what we are seeing at the present moment. Um, it go, we have figures go up and down, but as everybody realizes, the commitment to SARDA is unbelievable. Hi, I'm Simon Kelly, I'm the Secretary of SARDA Ireland. Today we were training various different levels of dogs, everything from pups who would be doing very simple bark and command, some obedience work and running out to find people, which we call dogs' bodies, right up to qualified dogs who'd be searching areas, pretty much as you can see behind us, on the move for about an hour, handling dog team, and then we'd assess and feed back to each of the members. So we look at what we need to improve, what to focus on to get the best use out of our dogs. Well, we have various different agencies that we work very closely with. Um, Mountain Rescue Ireland, we are actually a, a part of Mountain Rescue Ireland, so they would co uh, contact us if they needed a dog unit. We also get contacted by the Gardaí in the case of missing people. Um, we'd also get contacted by the Coast Guard again. We have a very close working relationship. It's quite a small um, kind of group, the Voluntary Emergency Services in Ireland, so there is a lot of kind of cross-pollination. Sometimes we can be tasked and we could be several days on site and um, sometimes it could be in really good situations we could be there for 30 minutes have a find and then you know that's your ideal situation really our dogs would be effective for about two to two and a half hours in normal weather conditions and um, we're really dependent on you know the strength of wind we're really dependent on um, the temperature as well obviously dogs always wear a coat they don't have a, a kind of decision whether to wear it or not so when it is warmer we have to make sure we're getting breaks for our dogs to so they remain effective and they will indicate when they find people and then we can give them a break and work a little bit further you might get a two-hour section then rest them for an hour search for another 30 minutes rest them and then search for another 30 and that would be about a full day's work for a dog to make sure we are being effective my name is Jerry Tobin and I'm training officer with SARD Ireland. Um, this dog's name is Dex. Dex is a collie retriever cross, main, mainly collie. Um, he's just coming at six years old now and he's been working, he's been qualified for the past four years. He's been qualified since he's two, which is um, in around, it usually takes him around two years minimum to train a dog, so it took in around two years with him. The ideal breeds of dog are the working breeds, so the collies, the collie retrievers, uh, shepherds, springers, anything with a strong coat, because um, they withstand all sorts of weathers, and anything that you know is capable of working. Um, they need a strong play drive, and they need to be completely and utterly toy obsessed, um, because the toy is what we use to reward them. This level of toy obsession is the obsession that you need, the way he just would when they find, they get the reward of the toy. They'll work for two hours, in excess of two hours, just to get that reward. So the, the theory is, is that by starting these dogs running off to get their toy into the wind, they will get all of the information that they need as to how to locate that person from the wind, not from the ground. So they're following air scent. And that air scent is comprised of little bits of skin cell that is sloughing off our bodies continually. We're losing these all the time and they form a cone as they leave our bodies. And as they get further and further away from our, us, that cone is getting wider and wider. So two, three, four hundred meters away from us, that cone is a very diffuse, wide cone. And these dogs are trained to turn as soon as they intercept any of those skin cells, parts per million of air of skin cells. And as soon as they intercept these, they turn on that scent cone and start weaving their way into where that person is, which is a stunning thing in and of itself to be able to do that but what's even more stunning is that having done that they then turn and they come back out to us and indicate that find at us and then bring us back into the person and that's the key everyone assumes the, the hard thing is teaching them to find people that's the easy thing the hard thing is teaching them to come back out and tell us that they found people they need to do that 100% of the time 
every single time that they've found somebody, once they're qualified like he is, 100% of the time they need to come back out and indicate that find. I'm Sheila, I'm a public relations officer with uh, Sarda Ireland. I've been with Sarda for about five years now. I have a, at the moment I've got a puppy, um, a six and a half month old collie, border collie. Um, I had to retire my trainee dog that I had been training for three years because he was diagnosed with hip dysplasia. Dogs bodies are volunteers that hear about us and um, generally are interested in, very interested in the outdoors and search and rescue but not, with, not in a position to be a team member themselves. They volunteer um, sometimes on a weekly basis, sometimes just for national training which is about six or seven weekends a year. What they do is basically they go off and they hide um, within a search area and our dogs go and find the dog's body. So some of our dog's bodies continue to body week in week out for years and never have a dog. Some bodies join with the intention of getting a dog but they have to do six months of bodying with us um, and part of that is because it takes that long to see what's involved in training a dog. It's a huge commitment, it's a really rewarding thing to do but it does um, require a huge commitment. start with with a pup and um, I have Sully now since he was 10 weeks old and the first months with a trainee search dog are spent trying to get them to bark for a toy because that's what it's all about um, indication 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 so um, unless they're indicating really reliably you don't move on to the next stage of training. So at the moment what he's doing is little run outs to bodies, to really fun bodies, who will play with him, get him to bark. And at the moment I'm just hanging around the area. It's not about me, I need him to be focused on the body, on who he's going to find. So that's what he's at at the moment. So the next stage is really to find a body without seeing them run away from him. So you just build it up in little blocks, little building blocks, and um, at least then if something goes wrong, you can just take a little step backwards. Our call-outs are hopefully to looking for casualties who have gone missing. Uh, this is what we say, we, the sooner we can get called out, the sooner we, our dogs can be used. So you have a human air scent, we, as you know, we work for human air scent off the air, so mm -hmm. therefore we can work in woods or any, any areas. It doesn't matter whether it's night time, in fact, at night time, our dogs probably work equally as well. So often you hear there's call outs called off because of daylight and we're resumed. We like to go out at night time and we can start equally as well. Our handlers are all qualified to do all that. We mostly go, hopefully, looking for people who are alive. So, like everybody else, we like to recover people if they are lost for the, for the sake of the families and all that. A while ago with this particular dog, we were tasked to search for a woman that was missing. She had been gone since lunchtime of the previous day. And when I arrived up for the search for the woman, um, there was an ongoing search using Gardaí, Coast Guard, Coast Guard helicopter, civil defence and three mountain rescue teams were in, all in one defined area of forestry. And I arrived up to begin my part of that search at one o'clock in the morning. And as we made our way through the forestry that there was other mountain rescue teams in and other search teams in, um, this dog took off in a straight line through the trees. And he had a little torch on his jacket so I could see him moving through pitch darkness. And then he stopped and then he made a straight line back out to me, indicated, brought me straight back into where that person was. And when we found the person, she was almost dead. Um, and because he found her, and because we found her within 40 minutes, the search was about to be stood down on her first light the following day. And yet, by the time we were finished, she had been evacuated down to an ambulance, subsequently into hospital, and has made a full recovery. And this is the, what these dogs are capable of doing. This is why we do the training that we do. 99% um, of our searches are not like that. 99% of our searches are so that we go, there isn't anybody in there. And that's as useful to a search manager. Because when you're dealing with search managers, they need to know where the person isn't. 
as much as where the person is. Um, so sometimes we get spectacular finds, like in this case, brilliant find, but most of the stuff that they do is just what's called clearing areas. So you come back out to a search manager and you say, there's nobody in there. And then you get into another area, you come back out and you say, there's nobody in there. And you're always gauging those things in terms of percentages. So you're 70%, you're 80% sure that there's nobody in there because you can never be 100% sure because the weather conditions, the wind conditions, the conditions on the ground, all of may, which may interfere with the way you're searching. But it just means that a search manager can then go, he needs to concentrate his search elsewhere. Um, so they they perform this really useful service of clearing areas and then every so often they perform a spectacularly useful service by finding people. The key to having a search dog is not having a dog that will find people. The key to having a search dog is having a dog that will tell you that it's found people. And that's what makes these so special. And that this is what takes them so long to train because these have to avoid sheep, they have to avoid deer, they have to avoid hares, pheasants, they have to avoid all of the distractions. They're working a quarter kilometre away from us on the side of a mountain in farmland and they have to avoid all of the distractions and work for an excess of two hours and at some stage during that two hour period they will intercept the scent cone of a person. They'll turn, they'll find that person, they'll come back out and indicate the find to us by barking at us and then bring us back in and they will do all of this in order to get a tennis ball. And that's mad. <laughs> the best time to be called out is immediately because the sooner we can get out, the sooner we can get the casualty found. Our situation is our dogs are equivalent to maybe 16 to 18 people searching. As we're here in the wood, you can see here, we can go along and search paths along there and our dogs can run down each side and we'll be in and out of an area in a very short space of time to be followed up, if so needs, by our mountain rescue teams or our colleagues who are with us. You can contact us on Facebook or by email and we're always happy to let, you, let people know what we do and um, how to get involved.